Hello. Hello, Julia, Aureliano, Florencia. Hello, Arthur. Hello, Sersha. And maybe hello, Alice. Maybe Alice will watch this one day. She's a bit younger than the moment, isn't she? Uh, well, last night I gave you the story of uh, Moses. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a sequel to Joseph because Joseph took the Israelites into Egypt to save their lives when there was a plague, and Moses took them out of Egypt um, quite a few years later. Um, because the Egyptians have decided they were uh, scrounging immigrants and uh, they uh, they wanted to make them work, so they enslaved them, which was a terrible thing to do. It really was. Um, but but Moses Moses got them out, uh, brought loads of plagues onto the Egyptians until they got sick of them and said, "Clear off." Then. Uh, parted the Red Sea to get them uh, across, drowned loads of Egyptians who were chasing them. And they wandered around the desert, found the Ten Commandments, um, and eventually uh, ended up in the Promised Land of Canaan, which is modern day Israel. And uh, Moses wasn't allowed, was he? God didn't allow Moses to go into the Promised Land, even though he'd done all that work. Uh, and uh, anyway, there we are. That's life, as they say. And then Joshua, Moses' right-hand man, he uh, he fought a few battles um, and uh, uh, took the land of Canaan for the for the Jewish people, for the Israelis, Israelites. Hmm. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story. Um, let me know what you think. It's not a it's not quite a foot tapper like old Joseph. Um, uh, it's quite a, it's quite a, it's quite a tough read. Uh, lots of uh, lots of nasty things happening to people: plagues, children being killed, people being drowned, cities falling down. Yeah, it's not a laugh a minute. Anyway, the thing is that these Bible stories they inspire lots and lots of artists and I thought you might like to see some of the paintings that the story of Moses inspired and these are paintings from uh, some of them almost 500, uh, 400, maybe five, yeah, 500 years old, the oldest one maybe um, and they're in lots of the um, they're lots of the great art galleries of the world. So would you do you think you'd like to see some paintings? Shall I show you some? Let's see what we've got. Um, here we are. Here we go. Here we go. I'll put my thing up there and then it doesn't cause too much uh, pain. This is, this is the first one. This is right at the very beginning of the story. This is Moses being, in fact, remember he was found in the... Uh, bulrushes at the side of the Nile uh, by the uh, by Pharaoh's daughter and Moses' mother because the uh, Pharaoh had said the firstborn son thinking about this of every Israeli had to be killed um, she hid the baby and then um, when she couldn't hide him any longer she put him in a basket um, and hid him in the reeds where uh, Pharaoh's daughter would come to bathe. And Pharaoh's daughter found him and saved him and brought him up. Um, and this is a picture of the baby being found. Um, it's by a, a Dutch painter and it was painted about 100 years ago. The guy who painted it was called uh, Lawrence Alma. Tadema, and um, it's a very it's a very lifelike painting, isn't it? Look, there's Pharaoh's daughter. She's sitting in a chair, being carried by shaven-headed slaves, just wearing little loincloths. 
and she's got her attendants uh, looking after her. There's one at the back who's playing a musical instrument. Um, there's a couple of um, male attendants fanning her with uh, big fans made out of ostrich feathers. And uh, there's two of her handmaidens who are carrying Moses in the basket um, to safety. Uh, it's quite a it's, a, it's a very interesting painting. It's a big vase there. I don't want to watch, so you don't knock that over. Uh, and uh, there's the River Nile. And there's all the people of Egypt. Well, not all the people, but those people of Egypt who are going down having a wash in the Nile, aren't they? You wouldn't have a wash in the Nile these days. No, it's, it's quite dirty, a bit polluted these days. What do you think of that painting? I like that painting. I think it's rather, um, rather interesting. There's a lot happening, isn't there? There's lots of things to look at. And those flowers in the front, they look like delphiniums. I grow those in my garden. I don't know if they, um, I don't know if that to grow in Egypt. The thing is, a lot of these painters just take a bit of a liberty. They um, they paint things that they would know that are in their own life. Now, just have a look at this next one here. This is also the uh, the finding of Moses, uh, and this is by uh, a, a painter who painted this in 1550, which is almost 500 years ago. And uh, the painter isn't known, they don't know who painted it, but it was from uh, a city called Verona, which is in Italy. And this is called the, uh, the discovery of Moses, um, uh, finding of Moses. But look at the people in this. But they're not, they're not Egyptians, are they? They're Europeans. And he, he's just painted Europeans. Your dad might tell you a bit more about this sort of thing. But um, they're all in European dress at the time. And um, <clears throat> the, 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 the uh, princess, she's got, a, she's got a tiara on, like a European princess. And this, the backdrop of the city, it's, it's just like an Italian uh, city in the Middle Ages. And there's a funny little dwarf there in the, uh, in the foreground. And there's a, a black man to add a bit of exotic colour. Um, but he's not, they're not Egyptians, are they? And it's not Egypt. The trees aren't Egypt. The city's not like Egypt. There's no pyramids. Um, looks nothing like the River Nile and I, I guess the guy who painted it just um, he just wouldn't have a clue what Egypt looked like so he he painted it as uh, as he thought it might have been if it was happening in Italy 500 years ago hmm here's another funny one just look at this this is you remember when Moses uh, had to flee into the desert and he was wandering around the desert and he came across um, Jethro's daughters who were trying to water their sheep. And there were some uh, men who were stopping their sheep getting to the water. And Moses um, uh, basically stood up for the uh, sisters and um, allowed them to, enabled them to water the sheep. And Jethro was so grateful, he said, come and stay with me and uh, marry one of my daughters. Well, this is a painting of that. Um, and it's by a chap. It's another Italian painter. A lot of these painters are Italian because they were the sort of world leaders in, uh, in art. And this is by a chap called Rosso Fiorentino. And um, look, nobody's got any clothes on, which is a bit uh, and they're all in a big scrap. It's like a barroom brawl, isn't it? It's like a um, free, uh, what do they call that? No rules fighting sort of thing that they put on. Well, you probably don't see it, but they put it on telly. Um, and there's a few sheep in the middle of it. But it's a right ruckus. I've no idea which one is, uh, is uh, Moses. I guess it's the guy in the middle um, with the black cloak wrapped around. 
just about to give somebody a good punch. And there's one of Jethro's daughters who's uh, uh, obviously in a bit of trouble. But again, they're not they're not Egyptians, are they? Uh, or uh, Semites? They're, they're, that, that's the people who live there. They're the um, Israel, Israelis were Semites. They were the sort of indigenous people. Get your mum to tell you a bit about that. Get into the realms of uh, anthropology here. Yeah, but very, very strange uh, depiction of that scene. Moses rescuing Jethro's daughters. And what's this one? Uh, this is another one from his time in the desert. Do you remember me talking about the burning bush? Um, well, this is the burning bush. It's God in the burning bush. Now, they've not just got the bush burning. It looks a bit like a tree, actually, not a bush. But anyway, um, there it is. It's burning, but God's standing in the middle of it, supported by a couple of angels. And he's uh, telling Moses, get back to Pharaoh and tell him to set my people free. Otherwise, there'll be trouble. Um, so that's God speaking to Moses from a burning bush. It always seemed I used to, you know I used to I had this story when I was in Sunday school when I was a little boy. Um, had to go to Sunday school and uh, they used to tell you these stories from the Bible, and uh, I always thought, you know, what a weird thing to do, fancy appearing as a burning bush. And I I asked Miss Pickering, the Sunday school teacher, what why a burning bush? And and she didn't know. She just hadn't got a clue. Um, I wouldn't have a clue either. Um, be a lot easier just to, you know, appear as God, wouldn't it? And say, hello, God here. Um, and if there was any, if you were needed to um, prove you, prove who you were, you could just throw a few th thunderbolts. And uh, uh, anyway, he was decided to do a burning bush. If it was me, I think I'd have been a talking sheep. Is going. That'd have really got Moses going. That would have done. Yeah, it's got here. Yeah. Get back to the now. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, so, um, what happened? Moses went back, didn't he? Went back to Pharaoh and said, "Let let the let the Israelis go." And uh, Pharaoh said, "No." Um, so there was um, lots of plagues. There was loads of them, actually. Um, but this is one of them. This is from uh, this is from uh, a chap called Turner, a very very famous English painter. Um, I think your dad likes old Turner. I've I've seen a few Turners myself. There's a lot in in Edinburgh. There's, they've got a whole collection of his watercolours, and they only show them in the art gallery in Edinburgh in January for two weeks every year when it the when the uh, daylight is is shortest and its darkest time so that so the colors don't fade on the painting so if you want to see them you've got to go to edinburgh in january anyway this is egypt and this is uh this is the seventh plague um this you know there were all those plagues there's plagues of flies there's plagues of frogs snakes um boils um and this was a plague of uh, pestilence that came and killed all the animals in uh, in Egypt. And uh, there's a dead horse there. And um, there's a couple of dead people, if you look at it closely. Um, not sure what that thing is down here on the right. Um, not too sure about that. The thing with Turner is you often can't see a lot of detail. <clears throat> This is quite a, it's quite a good one. Anyway, it's, it's a very black sky, and there's a pyramid. Just so there's no doubt, that this is Egypt. Stick a pyramid in. So that's one of the plagues. And this one, do you remember what? After all the plagues, Pharaoh said, "I'm fed up of this." The final, the final curse was <clears throat> killing the firstborn son. The angel of death passed over killed the firstborn son of every Egyptian, firstborn child of every Egyptian. And 
So it was terrible. So Pharaoh said, go on, get out, the lot of you. Um, but when they went, he chased after them with his army to, uh, to try and bring them back. Um, and they crossed the Red Sea. Moses parted the Red Sea. And the Egyptians followed them and the seas closed in and drowned them all. And here we are. Now, this, this is <coughs> a painting by um, uh, Rosselli. He was, um, he was an Italian painter. And he's painted this. This is in the Sistine Chapel in, uh, in the Vatican City in Rome, in Italy. Um, and it was painted... Um, <coughs> It was painted in the 17th century, so it's very, very old. It's uh, 400 years old almost. But you can see that the people, um, again, they're, they're wearing European clothes. They've got European instruments. Um, they've got uh, horses and armor, just like, just like a European army would have. But there they are all drowning in the Red Sea um, while well, Moses there he is with his black beard is standing on the on the shore um, watching the whole thing so this is uh, this is an example of God's God's vengeance don't cross God because uh, you'll be in trouble um, and there they are and this that's in the Sistine Chapel now so that's a very famous um, that's a very famous incident in the Exodus, the uh, the, the the leaving of Egypt, um, and it's it's there's loads and loads of paintings of the Red Sea being parted. This is a modern one. This it's uh, this is um, this is a, a, a website, a Catholic website. And there's a bit of propaganda, really. This. Uh, but look, there's Moses standing up on the rock, parting the waters. And can you see how the waters on either side have parted? And there's all the people um, coming across uh, as fast as they can. And uh, there's camels, there's carts, there's sheep, there's men, there's women, there's a few horses. And... Um, those Egyptians are going to be across soon, and then whoosh, all comes back. Um, yeah, it's quite dramatic, that isn't it? It is. Look at that. You can um, you can take a look at these um, in more uh, at your leisure. I'll uh, I'll send you I'll send you a PDF of it so you can put it on. Uh, a tablet and, uh, and play it and have a good look at the pictures because there's a lot of detail on these pictures. It's worth looking at them on a, a bigger screen so you can uh, you can see what they are. What's the next one? Ah, now do you remember when they were in the desert and they were a bit short of water and food and uh, Moses hit a rock with his staff, didn't he? And water flowed out. And that's uh, that's this one here. This is by the same chap who did the uh, parting of the Red Sea in the Sistine Chapel. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. No. Uh, what is it? It's, uh, it's by a chap called Francois Perrier, um, who was a Frenchman. And I thought it was quite funny because in France now you can buy Perrier water. Um, nothing to do with the painter. Uh, but there he is. And, and this is, um, Moses looks like an old guy, doesn't he? And uh, you know, people have, uh, it does look a little bit more authentic in terms of dress and things like that. But they're all thirsty and they're all very pleased to see some water. That was one of the miracles in the desert. The other ones were the quail and manna that sweet sticky stuff that was spread all over the ground right this is by uh, Rosselli and this is also in the Sistine Chapel uh, in Italy the Sistine Chapel's in the Vatican which is where the Pope lives who's the head of the Catholic Church and um, he's got he's got 
artwork worth millions, millions in the uh, in the in the Vatican. Um, but this is Moses going up Mount Sinai, uh, getting the Ten Commandments, coming down, finding the golden calf, and smashing them up because he was furious with everybody. And look, everybody's everybody's in um, modern, um, well, you know, modern at the time, Italian uh, dress. Uh, so it's quite um, it's quite strange, really. But there at the top, there you can see where's my pointer? There he is, old oh, Moses. And uh, he's talking to God. God's in the middle of a cloud, and God's God's giving him the Ten Commandments. And he comes down the mountain, uh, shows the Ten Commandments to the people. Then he finds that they've made the golden calf, and they worship in the golden calf, which is an idol, and that's uh, that's not allowed under God's law. And Moses gets really cross, and so cross that he throws down the stone tablets that the commandments are carved in and smashes them to bits. And he has to go back up the mountain, get God to do him another couple. Oh, excuse me. So there we are. Ah, and here's here's the same scene. This is Moses smashing the uh, tablet with the commandments on. And this is by a very, very famous Dutch painter called Rembrandt. Um, and Rembrandt was um, famous, was he famous for his use of light or something like that? But uh, there he is, there's Moses and he's got the rock. It doesn't look like rock, does it? It's the wrong colour, it's like a bound volume. But anyway, it's supposed to be a rock. And he smashes it up, furious with the Israelis, the Israelites. Now, when they got to the promised land, um, they weren't allowed to go, were they? weren't allowed to enter it for 40 years. But God allowed Moses to go up on a rock and have a look at it. <laughs> I thought it was really mean. Um, you're not going to go, he said, but yeah, come and have a look, see what you're missing. Anyway, Moses went up there, and this is Moses uh, looking out over the promised land and this is by it's by an american artist called robert robert walter weir and this is from the last uh, well from the 19th century um, so it's about 150 160 years old there's an angel and she's uh, he or she is um, pointing and saying there's a promised land and Moses is saying oh I really like to go there well yeah not so there stay in the desert hmm. so what happened after that well they stayed for 40 years and then um, Moses right hand man Joshua he led the Israelites into the land into Canaan the land of milk and honey but you remember there was already people living there so um, they had to fight a few battles and take the land off the people who were living there already and one of the places that was established was a big city called Jericho and um, this is one well, I've got this wrong I've missed that one out I'll, I'll have to put it in um, yeah, Jericho, Joshua um, blew his horn, carried the Ark of the Covenant around, and um, the city walls fell down. And then after that, he fought another battle, and that's this one. Um, and this is by an English artist called uh, John Martin, uh, a couple of hundred years old, this one. And this is, um, this is Joshua, he's fighting the battle, and he was winning the battle. Um, against the five kings and um, the sun was going to set it was going to be dark and the um, the enemy would get away so Joshua uh, commanded the sun to stand still in the sky 
get some extra daylight so he could finish off killing all his enemies. And this is uh, this is Josh. Josh, you were there. He is in the middle with his shield, pointing up at the sun up here, saying, "Stand still." And there's a rather grand city here, isn't it? Gosh, that's an amazing place. I'm not sure if this is just a bit of fanciful um, artwork, really, but that's him commanding the sun to stand still. Here we are. So like I say, uh, lots and lots of uh, different uh, paintings inspired by that Bible story of Moses uh, and the Exodus uh, from Egypt to, uh, to the land of Canaan. So I hope you found that interesting. Sorry I missed the Jericho one. I'll stick that. I'll stick that in the thing in case you want to have a look at the uh, the pictures um, later on in a bit more detail. So well, I'm going to uh, I'm going to sign off. Hope you enjoyed that. Do let me know what you think about uh, Moses. Um, I don't think he's as, I don't think it's as good. It's not as good fun like. Uh, Joseph, is it? Um, it's a bit more, um, it's a bit more war and violence. But it's all, it's all the history of the Jewish people. Um, so there we are. Night, night. Um, sleep tight and sweet dreams. Love you. See you soon. <laughs>